So I'm here with uh, Willie Munford from the Altaloma Warriors and one of CJ Stroud's first youth football coaches. And uh, Willie, kind of tell me the story you've told me before about the first day you saw CJ throwing and <laughs> why you became his coach. Well, I mean, he was seven, eight years old back then and he had a cannon for an arm and I'm looking at him right back there, throwing balls 30 and 40 yards down the field. and. I was coaching the older kids at that time. And when I went down there and saw him and a couple of his buddies down there, uh, Elias Ricks was one of them. Uh, and I seen him throwing the ball and I'm like, hey, I gotta I got go down there and coach the little guys. This is this is easy wins here with these guys. So, I mean, he had a cannon for an arm already. He was a natural, he was tall, you know, smart. Uh, and he was, just, uh, he was just a guy down there. I mean, it was easy to go coach him. They had a team full of talent. So, of course, I'm not, stupid I want to go down there and coach the team with all the talent on it so it was pretty fun after that I mean lots of lots of wins what was just your favorite thing about CJ at that age at like eight to ten year old kid what was the the funnest thing about coaching him well he was he was humble uh, he never got up too too high he never got down too high uh, and just when you're down there and you you got nine and ten year olds and you can throw the ball like that I mean you clearly have an advantage over other teams other teams are pretty much running the ball, and I got CJ down here just firing, hitting hitting kids in helmets and laying it on the money. The The biggest problem was to get the kids to catch it. You know, it was a lot of drops down there that used to piss me off, but I mean, we had, I think we had that love-hate relationship. I mean, I was hard. I yelled, I screamed, you know, uh, he took it, you know, and like I told you earlier, I mean, every year I wondered if he was coming back. Like, CJ, you really want to come back and, and get some more of this? He'll probably tell you that. And he's like, yeah, coach, I'm coming back. So, I mean, it was five years of, I mean, a, a lot of fun times. But, I mean, he, he was just smart. He was easy to coach. I mean, when you're down there and you're looking for a quarterback and you're just trying to find a kid to throw the ball, uh, that's the hard part. But when you got a kid that can already, already throw it, then you just teach him the mechanics of it. You know, uh, getting him to throw screen passes, Give him to take a little bit off of it, get him to put a little bit more on it. But, I mean, it was just fun to coach him and easy to coach him. I mean, he, like I said, he didn't go up and down. I know I probably was hard sometime, probably made him shed a few tears when he was 9 and 10 years old, you know, but he'd always come back firing right, every every single year. Did you see this kind of success coming for him? Someday he'd be a Heisman Trophy finalist. Is it hard to say that at a young age, or did you think he was destined to be a, a big-time quarterback? You know, I always never like to use that word NFL or, you know, big time, you know, quarterback because I always told them, you know, uh, you know, stay focused, keep your grades right, stay in school. We don't know how this, how this is going to pan out. But with CJ, he was tall, he had the arm, he was smart, and and I had it in the back of my mind and I told him, hey, man, you might, you might get there one day. And I know he was a basketball guy, but I was like, I'm a football guy, so I'm like, I seen all the potential. I mean, you seen it when he was, when he was eight. So it's not like he got 12 years old and 13, and all of a sudden, you know, turned into CJ. He was CJ 